Netflix, every other film is about the devil. Uh, in, in a good light, Lucifer has been on TV forever. We're being deluged, not only that, yoga, Reiki, all these crazy things, tarot cards, fortune tellers. I mean, society doesn't realize it, and that's the danger, and one of the reasons I believe the Lord had us make the movie. They don't realize we've been steeped in the occult. Well, it's not your typical movie made by these faith-based giants, Carrie Solomon and Chuck Konzelman, who are the creative force behind last year's breakout hit, unplanned as well as the ongoing god's not dead movies their new movie though is nefarious and it's a cross between this is my take c.s lewis's book the screw tape letters which you might remember as a series of letters written between a demon and his nephew demon which exposes you to really what lucifer is all about and if you had the cross between that and a much more general audience version of silence of the lambs which is so scary and creepy and weird but also fascinating and this movie features Sean Patrick Flannery and Jordan Belfi. This movie pulls you into the intrigue of a demonic possession and the suspense of what's happening from the very opening scene. We have Chuck and Carrie here to talk about their upcoming film, which I was able to see, like I said, and it was very intriguing, entertaining, and it stayed with me. So here we go, Chuck and Carrie. So here we have Carrie and Chuck. I'm so glad you're here with us today. And we're gonna hear about this movie, which I had the opportunity to watch and it freaked me out in the best way, meaning it stayed with me and I wasn't expecting it because I've seen your other movies. So I wasn't expecting this kind of a movie, like what I've said in the intro, like screw tape letters meets a general audience, you know, Silence of the Lambs. It's like, there's something about this movie that that is so for right now. And I don't usually do a lot of reporting about movies that are coming out. Normally I talk about them afterwards and we see the success of them and I'll, I'll kind of follow up or maybe with an actor. But there was something about this that I was like, I wanna to talk to these guys because I want our audience to hear who you guys are on a human level as far as you guys have leveraged a lot to just make movies like this. And then number two, how you fought for movies in this space to be made and maybe not in the horror thriller genre, but as far as faith-based initiatives. And then number three, like, I want to hear some of the stories about making a movie like this. What's that like? So, so let's go into like, why did you, why this movie? Why now? Why did you make this and spend so much time on this? You know, it was God. I mean, uh, we tried to do what he says to do. You know, we start out thinking we're going to make a cowboy movie and then all of a sudden we end up doing something else that he wants. So it, it's one of those kinds of things. You know, we listen to his voice and, and uh, it seems to us, if you look at our track record, that the signs of the times, what's happening in society at that moment is like when the Lord calls us to make a movie, like right now, demonic possession, it, it's everywhere. Yeah. And here, he calls us to make this movie. When it was the pro-life thing two years ago with Unplanned, it was perfect timing. So God's timing is perfect. And he calls us to do it. And we fight and we struggle. And, you know, we do things like that. But eventually, you know, we finally listen. We're not well, too... I don't want to take that lightly what you're saying because... I was going to say this later, but because I don't have the statistics right in front of me, but both the Catholic and the Protestant churches have have recognized an, uh, an uptick in the amount of people who need deliverance. I mean, it's, it's in the high percentages of what people are coming to the church asking for right now in a way that both both Protestant and Catholic churches have said they've never seen this before. And so not only did you make a movie in this time, but the church is reporting this is what people need to understand. You know, well, pop culture has got kids and adolescents especially delving into the occult, and it's incredibly, incredibly dangerous. Uh, you know, many, many years ago, the most interesting lecture I ever went to in college was by the priest who was the technical consultant on The Exorcist. And he talked about the gateway drug for possession, and he said it's a Ouija board. Wow. And the case that The Exorcist was based on, that involved a Ouija board, even though it wasn't in the movie. And he said, he, he challenged his audience. He said, somebody tell me where the word Ouija comes from. And nobody knew. He said, yes, it comes from the French word, we, oui, meaning yes, and the German word, ja, meaning yes, meaning yes, yes, and you're saying yes, yes, to a voluntary diabolical question. Yeah. And then he said, basically, his example was, he said, on a, on a dark night, a lighthouse is visible from very, very far off. When you pick up that Ouija board, you're turning yourself into a lighthouse. The demons take notice, and the demons come running, and the demons get involved. So you, if you're playing with it, you think this is a temporary thing, but the demons are playing for keeps. And we're seeing this on also, you know, whether it's tarot cards, whether it's... Um, as it's, it's everywhere. I mean, we're on the way here today. There was a store on the right and a store on the left. Witches brew, witches cauldron. We drive by the bus stop. There's advertisements for witch shows. Netflix, every other film is about the devil. 
uh, in, in a good light. Lucifer has been on TV forever. We're being deluged. Not only that, yoga, Reiki, all these crazy things, tarot cards, fortune tellers. I mean, society doesn't realize it. And that's the danger. And it's one of the reasons I believe the Lord had us make the movie. They don't realize yeah. we've been steeped in the occult. The cult has reached into pop culture is the problem. I and mean, pop yeah. culture practices. And as parts of our society become unmoored from the church and unmoored from traditional Judeo-Christian beliefs, they're wandering into the, these dangerous waters completely unprepared for what they're going to encounter there. Well, and I think of, I did an article um, for Charisma Magazine and it was about, or maybe it was online, about how, um, you know, the uptick the, and even people, Christians who use astrology now and how they don't think that it's that big of a deal. Then I think of your movie. And as I watch the movie, you start to see the Luciferian agenda and it's done very entertaining and scary. <laughs> it's like you're seeing this demonized man and the demon stalking through him and he's telling why he's not really talking about the occult items that we're talking about, but he's telling why Satan hates humanity so much. And he's telling why it, it kind of, to me, it, it sparks my desire for more discernment. I'm like, I want more discernment because we want to know how to stay out of that agenda. Like he's so reveals agenda and it's super not religious. Like this movie is not like, like Christianese at all. And it, there's moments in it where you're like going, Oh wow. Okay. Okay. That's how the enemy thinks. And I thought of that was C.S. Lewis when he wrote the screw tape letters, when it was between the uncle and the, the nephew and you just hear this agenda of the enemy and you're like oh and i think in that generation who first read that they never heard anything like it before right. and when i was watching this movie i felt like i don't think people talk about this in the church i don't think people talk about the insidiousness of satan's agenda but in this movie you captured it really well and you left it off i won't say what it is but there's kind of a cliffhanger like left it off like some more can happen which made me intrigued because i was like i want to see this play out more like which is really a, a great film technique that you used which i thought was beautiful so you made this movie and uh it comes out on april 14th and uh you guys are doing a premiere in dallas on uh just in the next week and a half or so yeah april yeah. 4th on april 4th so you have the news and the press coming and i know glenn beck took a part in the movie so he'll be there at the premiere tell us about just the the buzz around the movie how how easy or hard has it been to create even awareness or education for this kind of a movie well you know the the enemy uh is relentless, number one. And we, once we came into serving the Lord, the enemy is always attacking. You know, he doesn't go to bed. You know, it's 24 seven for him and his, and his army. And so, you know, every asset that other people have, they, they use freely. The, the other side uses it has all the money, all the equipment, all the time. They have the media advertising literally for free for them because it's basically corrupt and evil. On our side, it's not like that at all. You know, we, we claw and we fight to, tr to try and do it. So literally, but when you do what the Lord wants you to do, he sends that light through the darkness mm -hmm. and then people see it and they start looking and they slowly get drawn to it. And that's what's happening right now. We haven't had money to actually advertise the movie. Uh, only on, starting on the 3rd of April will we have a little bit of money to get out there and tell the story, you know, and to let people know, look, here we are. But what we've heard so far, people are saying that the same reaction you are. They're saying, must see it. It's unbelievable. You know, uh, many, many pastors. We showed it to 550 or 60 pastors last night. And the, the reaction was off the wall. So, uh, yeah. now, but not only on the Christian world, on the secular side as well, which is confounding to the other side because they're saying, wait a second. You don't, don't go to see this movie, which I think actually helps us, if you know what I'm saying. So when they tell you not to do something, we do it. You know, as Christians, we know. Yeah, absolutely. We absolutely. You know, There's a little rebellion. Throw a little rebellion and we'll all go. Well, I was thinking about it, it's coming up to Easter time and your movie's being released kind of around, in Easter month. And Easter is the number one service that people invite friends and family to, and they'll actually come. There's a lot of salvations. They call it Salvation Sunday because it's just such a big deal in the church world. And I was thinking, there's a lot of people I can't invite to church still. They just wouldn't come. And uh, and the good thing is we do invite people to church. And I love that because you it's just such a wonderful thing. But but you can invite anybody to a movie. And almost the whole world will go see a movie if it's a good movie. And this is a good movie. So I thought this would be a really interesting one for like some of my younger relatives who won't necessarily go see like a God's Not Dead at all because they think it's just a religious propaganda movie in their minds. But Nefarious is just a, a supernatural thriller. And so they can go in and see it and go, huh? And it, it could create a lot of questions. So I think... And when I say that, you know, my niece got saved through God's Not Dead. So I, I love the fact that you made those. 
But sometimes there's a judgment in the younger generation when they see it aligned to a faith-based kind of value system. And the fairy thing is going to hit some people over the head. What they didn't know that there's Christians behind it even because it's not, it's not as uh, faith progressive as some of your other movies have been. So what are you hoping for in that? We're, we're hoping that exactly what we were talking about, you know, in a lot of ways, this is the movie that a lot of Christians have been asking us for for years. They've always been, give us the movie that looks like a movie, smells like a movie, even if you're experiencing it, feels like a movie, and yet at the end can start a conversation about faith. But I also want to say, if you look at the poster behind us, the average Christian is not going to want to go to see that. Be honest, I wouldn't go see that movie if I, if I didn't know anything about it. The poster is designed to bring in the non-believers into the into the uh, theater. It's for the horror crowd. There are no demonics. There's no satanics, and he has no sex, no bad words, nothing. It's it's that's the secret, the magic sauce of this movie is that we have the gospel, but we're we're bringing it in a very uh, simple it, way. It's so different. Nobody's puking up strange substances. Nobody's climbing the walls. Yet there was one believer who was an executive. And I won't name him, but after he read the screenplay in that form, is when he saw it, he was terrified and went up and prayed over his children who were sleeping because he's like, oh, <laughs> you got to look at the agenda. Like you said, there was a great agenda. And it's it, what's great is that it's an honest conversation with a demon who, for his own ends, it serves his purpose to tell the truth for 90 minutes. It's truth. That's what it is. It's yeah. truth. Well, and everybody loves Sean Patrick Flannery. I mean, he's such an incredible actor, and he carries the movie. I mean, he just does such a good job, and uh, and he's the one who's possessed. And for the first moment, you see it on. And I do agree with you that there's you don't use any of the normal devices. It's not it's not like shock and all devices or like jump scares, but it's very terrifying. And if you if you believe it, it's very terrifying. So I thought that was interesting. Well, I want to kind of move forward because in the midst of this movie, and I, I just think it's really interesting that you guys, you talk about having to clog your way and like really believe in God and stand in faith for each component, whether it's the creation of the movie, getting actors attached, whether it's the script writing, whether it's uh, any of the parts, especially marketing. But you guys, you know, Unplanned was a, a breakout success last year. And when you guys created that movie, I'm the creative force behind it. Um, it, it got like really blocked and there was like intentionality toward, from big tech and other groups to block you guys. And I saw a clip on YouTube where you were actually addressing Congress about this. Like, I don't know if Ted Cruz or who, who, who's initiated that, but that was profound. Tell us about like being filmmakers who are all of a sudden brought into a much bigger conversation of like, what we have to address Congress because our movies being blocked by with people who have an insidious agenda against Christian faith-based movies being made. Tell us about this. Well, what we did on Planned, uh, we were suppressed at every level. We couldn't buy advertising. Cable TV wouldn't touch us. We had one network, Fox Network, that allowed us to, to buy advertising. Google blocked us completely. They made up reasons. They made up reasons our marketing department had never ever heard of. You know, making up excuses not to have us. Uh, so it, it was just uh, Twitter uh, was then owned by a different uh, person and uh, blocked us on our opening night. Uh, so we oh my God. God. Across the country. Yeah, but when they reinstated us, we had a thousand to one. Uh, better. We went from like a quarter million followers to, to less than 2,000. Abby Johnson couldn't follow her movie. But the difference between Unplanned and this movie, ironically, is during Unplanned, there was a hedge of protection around the, the actual production. We encountered all sorts of resistance, happening, but the actual production was protected. In the production of Nefarious, we faced uh, okay you will not believe three weeks this three was. weeks ago the, the last kind of straw so we're marketing we're in a building here in burbank there are only two things going on in that building post-production for the chosen and our marketing effort the roof got torn off in the middle of a torrential oh room. my gosh it happened on a weekend on a on a friday into a saturday so it rained for, torrential rain turned the, the inside to a water park the building has been torn down to sticks now. No walls, no floors. I can't believe because it was a perfect time for the adversary to do it because we're right in the height of the marketing. We've had on car crashes, eight car crashes. Oh, well, the best is on set. On set, we're the only production company I know that has a line item for ministry. So we have a husband and wife minister who are for Christians. We have a Catholic priest who's a trained exorcist. Well, the, the trained exorcist during shooting had an emergency appendectomy his appendix burst during removal. The surgeon told him you wouldn't have lasted another he almost, hour. He almost dies. We had eight car crashes of which, and real crashes, but no one got hurt. So the devil makes his moves, but the Lord protects, right? And he, and wow. so there's 
battle of good and evil. Just today on the way to, to this interview, well, I we needed some uh, yellow pads because we have to put you know invites down and it's important because we, we're on the road. We go to the Office Depot and the Office Depot says uh, the electricity just went out and we really needed those pads. We won't be able to sell anything for half an hour. Okay, yet. every time we make a phone call, every email, we it, it's crazy. It's statistically inexplicable. In the movie, the, the building that we were shooting the movie in, when we were doing a scene talking about the devil, the whole building was groaning under the wind. There was tortured metal sounds from the inside. So much so yeah. that secular people in the business standing there looked up and it says, it sounds like we're in hell. We stopped shooting the scene oh, about the devil God. and it goes away. We were told- We start it again, we start it again, and it comes back. It's people are, we've got this on tape. People look at, it's on. Every single day we're under we're in battle. I mean, we could just go on and, and on. We, we're thinking week, of doing a documentary. Our opening weekend, you know, we had a, there was a hole in the exhibition schedule when theaters are debuting movies, so we went there. We gravitated to it. Now there are six movies opening on our weekend. So, oh my you know, gosh! If there are believers, and no one's seen anything like it ever in history, it's the most crowded April ever. For believers who want to help support us, if they can really buy some tickets for opening weekend, yeah. I've seen we're going to have screens. But I will say, when you get this kind of resistance, what do, what do we know as Christians? Yeah. If you didn't get that kind of resistance, you're not doing the right thing. You're If the world loves you, like Jesus said, you're doing something wrong. So we've got the attention of the adversary. Yeah, I love that you're saying that because a lot of the other types of people who are watching this besides the general viewer are people who want to make films and want to do projects like this. And I think of Steven Spielberg when he was making Poltergeist and how many people got sick. There was rumors about all the poltergeists that actually manifested and they didn't know what to do. And they brought priests on set to try and help them. But because they were so kind of glorifying the evil, there was no resolution in it. It wasn't done by people of faith who were actually trying to expose something. It it was just an entertainment movie. So I felt bad for the people involved with it because many had nightmares and post-traumatic stress for the rest of their life who were involved with that movie. I know two people who aren't Christians who still talk about that movie as like a marker in their life being a part of that cast and crew versus you guys who are taking ground for Jesus and actually you're exposing the world to a Luciferian agenda. You're exposing to, to what the enemy wants to do right now in a very entertaining way. I just think like there's such a win in this. There's going to be such a win on the other side of all of this. And you know that. And so the battle in front of you, I just want you've, watched, you've fought so many other battles like you guys just keep fighting. But I think it's such a great example to young filmmakers who are out there and screenwriters and actors and people who want to be involved with something that's significant to say, if there's not a battle, is it worth doing? I love that. I love that challenge you're putting out there because I believe that we're about to populate and you guys have been like forerunners for a long time now, populate the entertainment industry, both the film, television, video game, music in a major way. Both uh, people like Sean Patrick Flannery and, and Jordan Belfi will lend their talent to projects like this, but also there's going to be people who create things that are outside of the box. And I'm so glad you guys are a part of the forerunner crew because there's just not enough in this space and it's a big space that people visit so often. There's not enough in this space that people go to. It comes out, what are you hoping? What are you hoping happens through this movie? Uh, you know, we obviously hope that everyone uh, in the world, every single person in the world sees the movie. I know we're not talking from the monetary side, we're talking from the spiritual side. This is not a culture war movie, it's a spiritual war movie. And so it's good versus evil. It shows what the bad guys are doing. And I think, and it's safe. Listen, what we'd say to everyone is this, Look at our fruit of our tree, unplanned. Do you believe uh, God's not dead? We've never betrayed our faith and we've never betrayed yeah. the Christian audience. And I'm, we're telling you, this is a safe movie for you to go to. And you will, people will be, you will be blown away by this movie. You'll want to tell everybody about it. And we're hoping that you do. It, I mean, it, people who watch this, believers or non-believers, a lot of them are going to walk away convinced that demons exist. And somewhere in C.S. Lewis's writings, he, he talks about that basically... Once you come to a belief in demons, you, it can turn you into a belief a believer in God. Yeah. If you believe there are demons who are fallen angels, you probably think that there are some who are good, and not fallen, and then you're going to realize somebody had to create them, and you're going to back yourself into you're going to paint yourself into a corner where you have to believe in God once you accept that. Yeah, that's oh, so true. Well, you guys, besides going to your local theater and getting a ticket, what's the best way to support the movie? Uh, I would say tell everyone about it, you know, go to the theater. And if you don't go to the theater, then certainly when it comes out on online or in streaming or in any way, you know, on Amazon or whoever it is uh, that's got it, 
you know, support us. You know, look, we can't keep making these movies that makes everyone in the secular world upset and, and save souls at the same time if we're not supported. Because we don't have support from the studio. Because we don't get support. We have nothing from them. We only have the people who are interested in our worldview going to see movies. That's all we Well, got. you have a great history of people in your world who want to go see movies, seeing your movies, because you've broken some records and done some things that not anyone else that I know of in the industry who's making movies like you have done. It's absolutely spectacular. I'm going to leave the link to the trailer so you guys can watch this. And so I'm going to encourage you to watch that trailer, but also buy a movie ticket for you and your friends, maybe for a Generation Z person, maybe for your mom or dad. <laughs> Everyone needs to see this movie. Like I said, I think it's just such a good movie. So I'm so glad to be able to help just give voice to it because I've really enjoyed it. And I really enjoy you guys. I can't wait to see what's next even after this. Thanks for being on today. Thank, Thank you, Sean. Sean. God bless. Hello? Execution scheduled for 11 p.m. But he's trying to convince us he's gone insane. And therefore incapable of being executed. I need you to prove he's faking it. Edward? I'm gonna ask you some questions. I'm not Edward. I'm a demon. Demons aren't really a thing. What happened to Edward? We own him. We? <laughs> He's a master manipulator. You have your head so twisted around you think you're the killer, not him. Now give me something to make me believe you. Prove to me you're a demon. It's probably just a coincidence. I want to talk to the real Edward. It makes me do bad things. I can't stop him. I need you to see something. You got a fan. Did the same thing with all his victims. Help me! I'm trying to, Edward, but you have to answer my questions. You have to tell me the truth. It won't let me! It can go away. It can go away. Yes? No. Exactly what it is that we'd like you to do.